want to use this opportunity to welcome you to our house of prayer uh, where we share our breakfast and then we share the word um, each morning. Um, this is um, Idikai Mary welcoming you to this uh, television broadcast for this morning. Thank you very much. And um, this is actually the broadcast for tomorrow, that is for Monday. This is for you to use, it's for the general public to use, to, um, uh, to pursue uh, their a ritual of spirituality, um, their place with God and with the universe and with themselves. Um, the issue of spirituality means a lot to me, that is spirituality is the art of um, how you live your life with God and how you connect that relationship with yourself and with other human beings and in your practice on earth, in whatsoever career you are, whether family life or a call to single vocation, it doesn't matter, whether in your business, how do you bring the thoughts, how do you bring your relationship and companionship with the Holy Spirit to the reality of this earth. That's really what, what it all boils down to. So with this, I welcome you to this, um, to this broadcast and I thank you for joining me. Please, if you have your, your tea, your coffee, your whatever you have available, your juice, um, come and join me in breakfast and in the Word of God. Remember that some of the things we do look so simple, but actually, in reality, a simple prayer that you pray in faith. Faith means absolutely knowing that God is with you and is listening to you and will do exactly what you say, will go a long way. Let me start by giving you a little, um, let me telling you a little story. Um, Right from yesterday, one of my covenant partner worried about her income. And I know you have to worry. It's normal human uh, uh, ways of showing insecurity. But for us who belong to the household of faith, who, I mean, God occupies the center of our life. The center of our lives is occupied by God. We don't, we don't go to that place. If you are obeying God and you are in the right place with God, then you don't need to panic and fear because that's the panic and fear is used to create confusion and then confusion is used to create destruction. Panic and fear is used to create confusion and confusion is used to create destruction. That is a major key that I'm giving to you this morning. Now, this morning, the same covenant partner called me and was worried about her finances. See, when your finance dwindle, it becomes a problem. And um, um, I told her not to worry, that not to worry. Money is coming, money in the bank. I always think to her, I always send to her and say, money in the bank, yeah, money in the bank, yeah, money in the bank. <laughs> and I'm not just singing it just for singing it, say, like hip-hop and rap stars do, no. I sing it because I know money is coming. A few minutes later, she called me. And she's been told to come and pick up a, a check for some good money. See, five minutes, ten minutes, miracle has happened. All because... A word was spoken to put her in the place of courage and the place of trust in God. <sighs> Let's begin our morning prayer with a prayer. Everlasting Father, our God and our King, we thank you for this day. We call on happy things to happen to us and to you too. May you see happy things and may you experience happy things, oh God. We are here this morning to also encourage you, not just you encouraging us. 
We are here to love you, not just you loving us. We are here to powerfully contribute the life you've given to us back to your life and back to your own business. Therefore, to you we give all glory and all praise and all adoration. We hold on to your Son, who is our life, and we will never let him go. The King is our King. He made us. We don't have anything on earth or in heaven outside him. Without him, we cannot even have your Father. Without him, we cannot even have an enterprising relationship with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we thank you, we bless you, we worship you for this miracle of our finding life, truth, power, intelligence in Christ Jesus. This is why, Father, we are bold before you. Because we have him. Lord, we ask you to bless what we are to do this day. Let happy people meet us. Let them bless us with happy things. Let happy events happen to us. We take dominion. The dominion that Jesus gave to us. We take that dominion over and scatter, and scatter every aura of darkness. And you alone will take the glory and the honor forever and ever. Amen. Now I want to start my morning with um, I want to start it with water. This water has um, has a lime, fresh squeezed lime in it. We we'll start with that. Just water, ordinary water. It will cleanse you and get you ready for the day. Many people don't like this kind of things because it doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste sweet, but it tastes good. I don't really enjoy uh, sweet things. I like mine to be just in between or a little bit sour <laughs> and then let me take my um, beet juice it's very good those of you who are dealing with some health issues high blood pressure all this kind of stuff um, little little things like that like this it's, um, they're amazingly very healthy I like um, I like uh, beets naturally I like beets I like fruits generally. I can live on fruits and vegetables all my life. I can live on fruits and vegetables. I love asparagus. If, if I don't uh, grill them, I like to boil them. Or oh, especially, you might not like what I'm going to tell you. I like to dip them in honey and chew them raw. Yeah. You know, things like that, you know. A very good broccoli, raw broccoli, raw celery. You can put it in a dip and chew them. They are very healthy for you. We were created to eat vegetables and fruit anywhere. That is our source of life anywhere. So let me take just a little. That's why sometimes I just like to take a shot of it in a in a glass than in a teaspoon sometimes I think it's easier the teaspoon is so small just very little alright and sometimes too I like to mix it with a little bit of the of the water just to dilute it a little bit. Mm. That tastes really good. 
That's really, really nice. Very beautiful. It tastes really delicious. That's good. And then the tea is actually boiled in here. The tea is actually boiled in here. That's one of the things I like about the flask. Then you simply just pour straight from it, from the flask. Then you pour some milk into it. It is pretty hot. Very, very hot. Jeez. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's try it and see how it goes. It's very delicious. It's very good. Very tasty. Then don't forget, don't forget, um, don't forget uh, the grape, either the green, the whatever color, they are very healthy for you. The berries are the same way, the berries are very good for you. I'll show you some more stuff. This is a, a jam. There is no uh, no club coloring, no um, no sugar, nothing. This is just just um, straight from nature. This was sent to me by some covenant partners in um, in the um, native Canadians. Um, they send this. And um, you can also have things like this. See, this is salmon. This is fish. But it has been grounded. There's no, um, no um, artificial things in it. It's just natural smoked salmon and maybe some other fish in it. Um, and then they, they ground it for me. And then... Uh, I actually, I actually, um, it's like, let me show you, this is how it is, see, this is, you can see the way it is, so, mm, yummy, so, I would just like use this, if I do not want to use the jam, I just use this fish, spread it on the bread. After that, I only eat one kind of bread that I enjoy a whole lot. And, um, and I spread it on it. And I also do things like this. I also, um, I also get things like, um, like, um, uh, fresh garlic and ginger. I, I scrape it and cut them tiny bits. Spread the fish on my on my bread, and then uh, spread the raw garlic and raw. Um, mine I also add onions to it. I, I enjoy onions. You know, that's sometimes I do that for for lunch. Uh, just a nice a nice piece of bread. The kind that I enjoy. I don't eat just any bread, and then I spread the the fish on it. And then I spread the um, the little chopped fresh garlic and the onions and the ginger, and then put it together, and I just chew it. They might not taste very completely yummy, but you're looking for help. You want the best for your life, you know. <laughs> you want the best for your life. But, you know, 
because of the fish or the jam that you've sprayed on it, you don't have that taste of garlic or that taste of ginger or that, you know, those kind of stuff. So they are just little things naturally that you can do to stay healthy. I also realized that my belly, my belly, since I started eating healthy and also adding some stuff to my meal that I'm not going to start talking about. I mean, simple, natural stuff. My belly just, without no exercise, my belly just went down, just like that, boom. I woke up one morning and it just, pa gone. Just lost a lot of weight. Just lost lots of weight. Why? Because I meditate. Two, I listen to music specific, not doing anything at that point when I'm listening to um, certain kind of quality music, music that that um, that elevates me. And then I have beautiful things, little tiny beautiful things to, to, to eat, little bits and pieces here that are really quality. So that's how it is. This is made of barley, very good. And don't forget that uh, there is, do not forget that there is um, there is apple right here. Don't forget, don't forget the one apple. And do not forget that when you visit our house of prayer, you will join me in breakfast. So when you make an appointment by calling 316-243-2967, you make that appointment if you want me to minister to you face to face, you know, then make that appointment. Let me know that you are flying into town just to hang around the chapel and be with me for breakfast or for dinner or for lunch or something, you know, and we will be able to pray together, study the word together, go out there and you can see the city and just take some time to relax, then go back to your hotel room or wherever you want to stay in the, in the city. This is a beautiful city, the city of Wichita is very beautiful, especially this side of town where the ministry is currently located, the living quarters, the chapel, the office, everything. So, I thank you for listening to me. And now, let me read you the word. John chapter 1 verse 7. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light. To bear witness about the light. That all might believe through him. That all might believe through him. He came to be a witness. He came as a witness. He came as a witness to be a witness about the light. 
Christ Jesus is called the light. There is no entity in the created and uncreated universe in the in anywhere that is called the light. There is none. There is no God except our God, the Father, and Christ, and the Holy Spirit, that is called light. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness. Jesus, why is He called light? Because out of in him, within the structure of his personality as God, light is the makeup of Jesus. Light is the makeup of God. Life, light, power is the structure. Fire, all these things are the structure and foundations of our core being called Jehovah, our God. So, light is just one of the core structure, core portion, the foundational stratas that make up Jesus. And because he has it in him, it is him. Light is him. And he is light. Then he can give us, he, he issued us a little being of himself by drawing out of his being the moon, put it there, the stars, he sprinkled it like dust, took, took a little bit of the dust of his light and threw it up into the, into the sky. And different planets got stars. And out of him, he took, he took some of the dust, you know, the particles of light within himself, and threw it up there. And then the sun hung there, the moon hung there. They are just hanging. In all the planets where you have stars, sun, moon, all those things, they are all hanging there. They are the decorational things that he puts in there. And they are all fulfilling our purpose. <laughs> God, God give me insight to see into these things and to teach by this, by revelation. While others talk more about prophecy, I talk about revelation. I'm not talking about the book of Revelation. I'm talking about insights, mighty insight into how things are or were and are going to be. And John discovered his job. John discovered his job. You see, I'm enjoying myself this morning. Whenever I'm on the television broadcast, I come to enjoy because God just makes me happy and makes me to enjoy these things. <laughs> I enjoy what I do as a teacher of the word, <laughs> as a pastor of it, and as a teacher. These offices running through me, prophetic offices, all those things. Wow. And here we go. He came to be a witness about the light. He discovered his job. What a great job it is. For some people, they take the job of they take the job of an announcer as something small. We call him John the Deepest. But God revealed to me that that is not really his name. Dipping people in water was just 
well, part of the outflow of what he was doing. His real name, the Almighty God told me, is John the announcer. That was the greatest thing that he was doing. Before he baptized people, he told them that what he is doing, he is doing it on behalf of the one that is coming, the light. He is coming. So it wasn't the ritual of baptism that was the very important thing. The most important thing was he was preparing them through repentance for the emerging kingdom which began to come powerfully with the emergence in the physical, not that he has not always been here. With him being here, powerfully walking on earth with us, his world. He's always been here also. After all, the Bible says, the rock from which they drank, the rock that followed them in the Old Testament was the same Jesus. It is the same Jesus whose voice we hear in Genesis chapter 1. He is the one that is creating. Let there be. That's the voice of Jesus. When you discovered what God called you to do, no matter how little it is, take it very serious. Discovery is power. When you discover your talents, your giftedness, it becomes power. His job was to announce that Jesus, the Lamb, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Turn to Him. Follow Him. John didn't come to compete with Jesus. They were cousins. He knew where he belonged. In this thing, you must know where you belong. You must know where you fit in, in the government and economy of God. If you do not know, call me. I'm available to help you discover that. That's why I'm having the school of ministry. From October 15, have you registered for that school yet? Have you called me and let me know that you feel called to leadership, to business and investment, that you feel called to, uh, to, to power, to be a missionary, to go on mission, to be a pastor, start a church, start a business, that God has called you into either one of the fivefold offices, you have gifts that you need to exercise. Therefore, I call on you to discover, no matter how little, your gift, discover your gift, discover your life, discover your place in the government and economy of God in this earth. And do only what you are told to do by God. John did not go doing so many other things. He challenged the status quo. It was part of his lifestyle. In order to tell them, look, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And the one who owns the kingdom is around, is coming. And he stick to what he was told to do. That's why when angels appear, they do not come to begin to fraternize with you and all kind of stuff. No. They come, they tell you what they are asked to come and tell you or do what they are asked to come and do and then they leave. They have no time for all those other side shows. Why are you spending time on the side shows instead of walking straight into what you are supposed to be doing? Other people want to come and get you into the side shows, into the circus of life. 
circles of life. And you follow them. And then the whole things that the whole package you were called to enjoy and to be and to do just for. In Nigerian language, we say just dabaru. <laughs> he came to bear witness to the light. That's what I'm called to do also. Make sure that you discover who you are and what you are called to do. The job that you're doing, your career, professional career, have you consecrated it as a king's business? Then nobody will be giving you headache on your job anymore. Your marriage, your children, have you consecrated them as the king's business? Think about what I'm saying because this is very, very serious. It is beautiful to be with him because he is beautiful and light is beautiful. I want to stop there for this morning. I will continue to talk about that verse tomorrow or Tuesday. There. Yeah. Discover who you are. So that you will not sink into the abyss. I do not want you to sink into the abyss of constantly moving, constantly wanting to do something new. If you find yourself in a situation that you are constantly wanting a new man, a new woman, constantly wanting a new marriage, constantly wanting to move to a new place and so on, then you have a problem. Because there is one location that God wants you to stay and not move anymore and become stable. Become stable. John stayed in the wilderness and became stable in the wilderness and become a witness. He did exactly what he was told. When you begin to do exactly what God wants you to do, the money will come. The things will flow. Don't be extravagant with your resources and with your life. Guard your life and guard what God has given to you. That's our breakfast for this morning. Let us pray. Repeat this after me. Father, help me to discover who I am so that I can acquire power to do great things upon the earth for you, for myself and for my family. I ask you to bless me this day. I ask you to fill me with mighty, mighty anointing. Let my life be filled with Jesus. And let it sparkle with mighty and beautiful brightness. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want you to continue to say this. No weapon fashion against me will prosper. They will all fail. Every mouth and mind, hands and legs, anything manufactured in life or in spirit against me, they will fail, they will collapse today. And I have spoken. Father, supply all my needs. I pray that let your will begin to function in me. The prayers I have made before thee, O oh God, answer me far more better than I've asked thee. Let things begin to be done in my life as you always will want them in heaven, which means there must always be good things happening to me. Thank you, O oh Father, for hearing me this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. There are some of you this morning who are watching me. You need to be healed. The Almighty God is asking me to pray for a woman in Haiti, Justina. And there is another woman called Josephine. I am also praying for a lady in West Germany who has a tumor somewhere. 
I am praying for a girl who has a thyroid problem. There is somebody I'm praying for this morning with injury on your right foot. There is someone that I'm talking to right now who is watching. You've been thinking about ending your life. Yes, you have been. And I'm praying for you this morning. There is somebody in India that I'm praying for this morning. You think that there is no hope because you've been praying for your family to become Christians and they've not done that. There is one of you that I'm praying for who is in Pakistan and you are thinking of fleeing your country because of what is happening. God is going to give you direction. For those of you that I've mentioned, there is also somebody with a neck injury and you have a cast around your neck. And the Almighty God is healing every of these diseases, every of this pain that I've called out. The healing is taking place right now. That's how it shall be. Hashakayatiya. Mokondumbusakiya tarakiyambo. Munde kasati kayando. Make two sin de kachendi bakaranda. Me kurenti sakuyandi, me ntumbo sakiyanda. If you live in Siberia and in Croatia, this prayer is for you. You've been looking for God to discover where God is real. Also, if you live in Russia, this is what the Holy Spirit is motivating me to pray. If you live in Europe, if you live in Canada, listen to me carefully. There is a mighty move of God through my ministry that is going to go through those areas. That is going to come to Europe. Because God is dealing with two spirits in Europe. As he told me. And it's beginning. In fact, it began yesterday. So if you live somewhere in Europe and you are watching this video, you have to call me and join me in prayer. You have to join my intercession for Europe. I want you to join what I'm doing in ministry for Europe. Those in Russia, Siberia, Croatia, all those areas. If you live in India, there is a big breakthrough that is coming to India. And I'm going to play a vital role in Europe and in Asia in the coming awareness, in the coming mighty outpouring. There is an outpouring about to happen. And I want you to be part of it. So I want you to support what I'm doing if you are in those nations. There is a big, big bang about to bust in Canada and the United States. Thus says the living God, I am about to do something that you have been praying for. I'm about to do something serious as you've never seen it before. So that you will begin to live a life of deliverance, miracles, and faith. The three things God wants me to stress in all my broadcasting network, my books, in everything I do. Deliverance, miracles, and faith. Hallelujah. There are many people who are watching this video this morning. This is taking a different route from the way I wanted things to go. You are under a financial stress. This is what the Sovereign Lord is telling me to tell you. I am removing your financial difficulties if you will let go of your pride. You do not need much to live a big life. You do not need much to be much. You need to invest your money. Invest it in the things of the kingdom like what we are doing here in our ministry. 
invested in houses, in projects, not in things that doesn't really have, you don't not even know how it's going to turn out. The Almighty God is asking some of you to start a business, no matter how small. There are little, little business you can start with or without money. When are you going to begin? God is about to do what we call the reign of money. And it's going to happen with people who will come under the coverage of Edekai Meru's ministry. People who will come under the teaching of deliverance, miracles, and faith through my ministry. If you will be obedient and you are willing, you will eat the fruits. You will eat the fruit of the land, says the Lord. I will open a portion for you that nobody can take away from you. I will put to shame the enemy that has been fighting you. Not that I have not seen it, says the Lord. But it's time. I am acting right now on your behalf. Make plans for big things, says the Lord. Make plans for a bigger anointing. How do you know? It's when those things come for you and into your life effortlessly. You put time and talent into it and I come to work for you. Make the move first. Let me see the move. Thus says the living God. I am about to tear down the pride that has been setting you back. I am about to move you into a place where nobody can remove you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear Father, we thank you for your word this morning. There is a woman who has cancer. This is what the Sovereign Lord is saying. I am healing you right now. If you believe my servant, you will be healed. For those of you who believe in my ministry and believe what comes out of my mouth as the word of the living God and not waver, you will receive mighty miracles through this broadcast. If you are a single father and you are raising your daughter, listen carefully. You must raise ladies. God is going to help you to raise your daughters. And if you are a single mom, open your heart to the realities of how things really are done in the real world. Thus says the Lord. I will bless you. Do not use kids, children, for vengeance and for revenge. It's not acceptable in the kingdom. Do not accept where there is danger in relating. You know what I mean. You and your grandmother are not talking. And because of it, your mom is in the middle of this fight. This is time to reconcile whoever this is for. This is time to reconcile. There are many of you in India. I don't know why I keep going back to India and Philippines and Pakistan there are many of you in those areas that need to begin to call me you must begin to email me or write me a letter at 550 West Central Avenue number 822 Wichita, Kansas 67203 USA you need to call me or to write to me because there is a lot I have to do in your country 
and those of you from Eastern Africa, East Africa, you need to connect with me. If you are a pastor or if you are a bishop, archbishop, whatever you are, deacon, evangelist, apostles, if you have a church or business or investment or you are into politics, God doesn't want you to go to which doctors to go and find your power. Call me. I am here. If you need somebody to protect you, if you need somebody to pray with you, to call on the miracles of God to come upon your life, I'm right here. God be with you and bless you until I see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. There is a lady that is called Mariam that is watching this broadcast. Make sure you give me a call. I think you live in Egypt. I will repeat it in the next broadcast. Your name is Mariam. You need to begin to call me. God wants to bring a final solution to the Egyptian problem. And you and your family, you are going to play a major role in it. Bye-bye to you all.